So in the previous lecture, we defined an entry and a button inside of the content page. We learned a bit about how we're going to be defining these SAML elements, and we learned a couple of different ways in which we can have the syntax. Now, we also noticed that when we created the button, the entry disappeared. And I mentioned that it's not as much as it disappears as it's being covered by the button. So during this lecture, we're going to take a look at one container, this tag layout container, that will help us solve this quite easily. So let's just get started. The thing that we're going to be doing in here is defining a new element that is going to be a container that is going to be called stack layout. Now, because this is a container, you may remember that I mentioned it is going to be defined like this. It's going to have an opening tag and a closing tag because inside of it, we're going to be defining things. And precisely the things that we're going to be defining are these two elements that we have. Now notice that immediately, and let me just move this or indent these two elements in here. Notice that immediately we see now that these two elements are stacked together. And in fact, their heights are changed. Now the heights are the regular heights for the entry or for the button. We no longer see using the entire available page instead of the content page. And this is going to be stacked, of course, the first element defined inside of this container is going to be the one all the way to the top of the container, and the next one at the bottom of that, and so on and so forth. Now, right now, the container is the one that is going to be using the entire available space. This could change if, for example, inside of the content page, we had more elements. So, for example, if this stack layout were inside of another stack layout, let me just define the stack layout like this and indent this stack layout. And instead of the first stack layout, I had another entry. We can see that now this stack layout is different. It is no longer using the entire available space. It is using the available space after this entry has been added to the UI. So hopefully this starts to make a little bit more sense. You can start to define elements and the stack layout is going to help you stack elements together. Now, there is another thing that I want to do in here before moving forward. And let me just head back to the definition that I had before with this entry and the button. Right now, we do see that the UI on both on Android and iOS does look the way it's supposed to for both of the platforms, but I don't like the fact that there is no margin to the sides of these elements. Like they are defined all the way to the sides and to the top of the UI. This doesn't look particularly good to me. So to the stack layout, I am simply going to add some margin. Now, if we, when defining the margin, I set simply one value, let's say 20, this margin is going to be applied to all four sides, to the left, to the right, to the top and to the bottom. I could, however, also define two values, let's say 20 and 10 separated by a comma. The 20 will be used to set the margin for the left and for the right. And the 10 is going to be used to define the margin for the top and for the bottom. And finally, I could also define all four sides. For example, let's just define 20 for the left, 20 for the top, 20 for the right, and zero for the bottom. Now this is going to look very much the same as if I had just 120, except for the bottom margin, which is going to be zero. This is how I want to leave the margin in here. And notice that this margin is applied to the stack layout. And because it is applied to the stack layout, now the, the elements defined inside of it are going to respect that margin. I could also add some extra margin to the elements inside of the stack layout. 
Let's say, for example, that I want some additional top margin for the bottom, so it's a bit more separated from the entry. I could do it like this. But mainly, I believe, is in the containers where you want to set these margins and have the elements inside of these containers respect those margins and maybe eventually apply some margins on themselves, but more for separating them vertically, not horizontally. So we have now defined this stack layout. In the next lecture, we're going to complete this definition of this main page that eventually, by the way, is going to help us add new contacts. These eventually, actually, let me just change the value already. Let's just call this save. But we will need a few more entries. And more importantly, we're going to have to know when this button is clicked. That is what we're going to learn in the next lecture to know when one button is going to be pressed, so eventually we know that in that moment we have to save this new contact that may be created from this main page.